All right, we're back at it again. Lesson three of Hebrew eschatology. Title of this study, The Removing of the Blindness from Israel. The blindness of Israel is real. They have been blinded to the extent that they do not know who they are and are not aware of their true heritage and identity. Now, we were told that we descended from Ham, but we debunked this lie in our Proving the Bloodline series of lessons, and this was to happen by the providential will of Yah because it would be through the blindness of Israel, the Hebrews, that the Gentiles would be saved. It was his intention to save the Gentiles all along. Now remember that the so-called African-American people now known as Negroes, people of color and people and black people are the race of people we are actually talking about. They are Israel or the Jews or the Hebrews, whichever name is used. All these terms identify the Negro as the children of Israel, the genuine children of Israel that we read about in our Bibles. We are actually reading about ourselves and our, and our uh, ancestors. They are the only racial group of people that were enslaved, scattered among the nations through the transatlantic slave trade, ostracized, ridiculed, hated, and suffered the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Now, we have already demonstrated these facts through our Proving the Bloodline series of lessons. And if you haven't watched that series, please refer or go and view this series if you have not done so. They are to be found in the Proving the Bloodline Facebook group. So what was the extent of Israel's blindness? This is the question that we need to deal with. First and foremost, they lost their heritage. Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, verse 4 to 5. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Now, in Genesis, the 12th chapter, 6 to the 7th verse, they lost the land heritage that Yah promised them through Abraham, the father of the Hebrews, that he would make of him a great nation to multiply his seed so that his seed would have a heritage. And Abram passed through the land into the place of Shechem, into the place of Moray. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give thee this will I give this land. And there built he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him.
So this was the land heritage. Yah promised the land to Abraham and to his seed. Genesis the 13th chapter, verse 14 to 17. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to, the, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Genesis 13th chapter, verse 14 to 17. This is the land heritage that God gave to the children of Israel, i.e. the Hebrews, i.e. the Negro. And also Exodus, the sixth chapter, verse eight. And I will bring you into in into the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it you for an inheritance. I am the Lord. And also, they lost their promise of protection. Genesis, the 15th chapter, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Also, Isaiah, the 54th chapter, verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So when will Israel's blindness be removed? The removing of Israel's blindness will occur when the fullness of the Gentiles become in. Romans 11 chapter verse 25. And it is a fact that Yah has began the process of removing Israel's blindness as we speak right now. The many Hebrew Israelite camps that exist today is living proof that Yah is even now at work taking the scales from Israel's eyes. So what exactly do we mean by this? The strange gut feeling, or should I say that strange gut feeling, that we had all along told us that we as a people or as a Negro race of people were an unusual race of people. But if it is indeed true that black folk, people of color, and Negroes are the seed of the prophets, and the descendants of the Jews of the Bible, then it is also true that the time of the Gentiles is indeed coming to an end. And this means we are approaching the time of the end.
Romans, the 11th chapter, verse 25 to 27. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Sion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sin. Second Chronicles, the third chapter, verse 13 to 16. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Just for me, I'm going away. 